almost second to last. Hola community, welcome to Blender Today Live episode 249. We, uh, do you remember 2.49? 2, 2, 2 that was the release before Sintel came out, before 2.8, the big change in the user interface that the one that brought add-ons and, uh, and and the whole, yeah, basically the whole UI was, was re-factor for 2.4. 2.5, yeah. 2.49 was also the first DVD I made training for. There was also many books written uh, for 2.49 because it was the last pick in the series. Um, I remember when 2.49, when 2.50 came, I that what 2.50 never came out as an official release. It was alpha, beta, until 2.56 or so. And then uh, in <clears throat> in 2.5 five i have four or five i remember saying like i'm never gonna switch because i like my windows horizontal my panels horizontal instead of vertical so <clears throat> how can you try 2.5 well you can try it in the blender website yeah, where, where you download any other blender and then release it and then you can go to the old version so you can also just go here to <clears throat> see the splash screen of 249 and uh, from there you can see what's new, what changed in that release and a bit of history. We are going to, you just downloaded 4.0.2. 4 By the way, I'm looking at the chat here. 4.0.2, 4 well, in Blender.org, while you're there, if uh, the one announcement that I would like to do today, it's a small one, it's that um, Blender, uh, more precisely Francesco and uh, Dalai were at FOSDEM and the Open for Forum Europe. Um, last week, two weeks ago, during the, the weekend in Brussels. So it's it's nice to see Blender having a bit of a closer connection with other open source projects and the open source part of Europe. Let's try to get Blender in as, as a regular um, part of the curriculum in anywhere, in everywhere, right? Like Blender, like not Blender, any open source, but 3D should be should be part of every school nowadays. Like you learn how to draw, how to write, how to paint, how to 3D. Wouldn't that be great? Anyways, um, let's see. What has uh, changed this week? Actually, actually, not much uh, other than there is a whole new release available. 4.2 Alpha is out. There is not much that has changed, so don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't expect much. As the number changes, as always, the UI is tiny. I can get used to 1.0. I always have to make it larger. Um, then, yeah, the only thing you might notice is that you have Eevee next and Eevee. Um, that's the only difference because uh, for 4.1 it was Switch, and 4.1 is going to have Eevee, as we know, and not ha not going to have anything, uh, anything else. How do you integrate Blender with AI, that's a good question. And I, well, at the moment there is no AI in Blender other than like uh, denoising. <clears throat> but, but I can do a small announcement for next week that next week is the last episode of Blender today. So I'm going to have a guest here, a special guest that you may know. You may recognize it's the reason why we're all here, basically. So why, why this this name is called this this show is called this way. Ton, no, Tom, almost Andre, Ton with N, yes, Ton for Antonio. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna have a um, Ton next week. He's going to be answering. So the idea, I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna spoil it a bit. Um, before starting with what's new in Blender. Um, so the idea is to, to since there will be no weekly updates as in a video, there, there are updates on uh, on the dev talk forums and I can even show you how, how do I get my the updates myself and you can do it yourself at home if you want, super easy. Um, so the idea is to have like a, some sort of uh, ask me anything 
So ask Ton anything. Um, especially, no, not like, where is this button? Where is that button? Like, where is Blender in five years? Where is, like, what, what's the Blender stand with AI? Where is the game engine? Will there be a game engine? Like, any, every question that you ever wanted would be nice to have some... Um, some point of view from from Tom. Now, Tom announced uh, at the Blender conference that he, at some point in the next five years, he would like to uh, like step um, not down aside from the um, Blender Foundation chair and be more as an advisor. Um, I mean, retirement age, of course. But still, I think he has the vision. He has always had the vision, so it is important to have that uh, around and have a, like a, a like a to-do list you know like a here for the next 10 years okay Tom said we should do this and this and this and uh, uh, what else will come out in the next next coming years right you can't say no to AI it's here um, but AI is so many things right is there is machine learning and uh, like an, an AI to make my textures I don't think nobody would get mad if we get like it's not stealing art it's not like make my render pretty kind of with uh, somebody else's style is more like hey make my make this UVs for me please make rig this thing please or give make make, make myself a, a, a texture a realistic texture a picture texture anyways um more about that later or next week actually just you need next week and we we we, we, we can uh, you can ask questions maybe um, I'm gonna make a thread and then maybe you can ask questions there but I'm I'm mainly going to be uh, interviewing live so yeah anyways that's that's it shall we see what's new in blender so there has been uh, about 252 commits last week most of them were like either fixes refactors and cleanups there is a mo most of the focus goes to the the new release right the new fixing 4.1 whatever it needs to be fixed please report any issues you may find 4.1 is in beta Rem let, let's not lose focus there let's remember that there is a beta release coming before continuing with the alpha because otherwise it's nice to have new features, but it's also it's nicer if those features don't <laughs> crash. So let's start with the A. As always, we go in alphabetical order. So A for animation <coughs> module. Super nice feature. Look at that. It's not no longer a remake of a remake. It's an actual new feature in motion pads. The feature is motion pads in camera space. This is this is awesome. So, and you know motion pads where you have a bone that moves from A to B and you can have, you can make, you can calculate motion pads to see a curve in the viewport where the bone, either the tail or the, the head goes from point to point. Well, now there's an option where you can map that to the camera. So from camera view, this is, um, so let, let's read the, the commit here. Uh, animators, especially for film and TV, yeah, because game for, for, for game or motion capture you may don't you may you may want it to to look different or keep an eye on it from every point of view but for film and TV it's um makes more sense and um, often need to track the movement of things in screen space at the at the end of the day the pixel motion is what counts unless you're doing 3d like stereo are people making doing st st stereo 3d nowadays still um, motion pads were always oh yeah with no how do they call it now it's not 3d it's not vr is spatial computing there you go next so uh, motion pads were always in world space which made it hard to use when the camera is also animated for example during action scenes good point uh, this pr introduces the feature of projecting a motion path into the screen space of the active scene camera Limitations. This makes the motion path only useful when looking through the active camera, which I wouldn't call this a limitation. I would call it like, yeah, that's how it works. Unless we could somehow store both 
motion pads. When you're looking it from the camera view, you show the camera motion pads, and when you're looking it in the three in 3D, you use word space. Would it make sense? Would you need a toggle for that? Nah. I think it would make sense to store both, but um, just thinking of how clunky these motion pads are, not, not this in particular, but Blender motion pad code has been in the past and it has been tried to be fixed for so many years and it always seems to be a headache for developers. Maybe there is a, a limitation, a technical limitation there to not store more than one per camera. Um, anyways, thank you, Christoph, for working on this. Super nice feature. Very, very nice. Another feature by Christoph, it's, well, wait, wait, there was, where was this? There was some place it was requested. Here, feature suggested by P2 Design by Pierre Poucault. Thank you, Pierre. Because, you know, coming up with the ideas or proposing ideas and making a nice proposal and talking to developers and giving feedback, it's also a big part of the of the job. And it's even for reviewing it, of course. Otherwise, code where it wouldn't be anywhere without review. And next feature, it's for the graph editor. Automatically lock key translation to a single axis. So you know how you can select a keyframe in the graph editor and press G to move it and then X or Y to move it in the axis. Well, there is a toggle now in the view menu that allows you to do that automatically for you. So you toggle the, ah, you can actually look at it because there's not much new in Blender. There's not much, <laughs> not gonna be many new. So let's spend the time to actually look at the feature. And I'm gonna go to animation. I'm gonna add a keyframe and another keyframe. I'm going to switch to the graph editor with control tab and here in my keys I'm going to select this key toggle the auto lock key axis on and now when I press G to move by default you, you can't tell but I'm actually being very sloppy what well, you can see here my mouse is going um, yeah in, in like sideways but mostly upwards so that's why it gets locked Without that, it would follow the position of the key precisely. And I'll have to go like G, Y, G, X. So it saves you a click. Super nice. I think it has like a like a threshold there that you can move it sideways and then it always stays sideways unless you go past a certain threshold to unlock it from unlock it from the constraint. <laughs> Next. Oh, actually, that, that's all for the animation editor. Again, there are more changes on pretty much everything that I'm showing. You can see the full list on Blender community website. You can click on the already 11 comments. Gee, all right. Um, yeah, so there were three changes in animation. One I'm not mentioning because it's a, it's a fix. So it's a nice fix, by the way. It's, it's about baking armature properties. Um, next. Let's uh, continue with the A for assets. Well, this is not a feature now. It doesn't have any impact on you, your workflow today. But I like it when developers hint at coming features. So the change is pure, pure just, uh, code. There's no impact in the user, to the user experience. However, this makes it so internally it's gonna use an uh, inheritance library class. What does it do or what does it provide for the future? Well, in the future, it will be extendable. So new kinds of asset libraries, for example, Blender project asset libraries, which is the Blender project project. You know how Blender is not aware of which project you're in? It's just for Blender, a blend file from Toy Story and pet projects it's the same well the uh, it's not aware of a project well that is something that is in the roadmap for some time the people downstairs are probably the most eager to have this feature ever downstairs i mean as a blender studio so yeah it will be worked on 
uh, it's in the roadmap or it has been for many years but let's hope this means that it's a bit closer at least um, so the blender project as a library so you you can define asset libraries per project in the future or online asset libraries which i have a feeling we're going to see this probably earlier <laughs> than projects even though you, if you think about it maybe projects are easier than in so in the, adding a whole handling of online asset libraries right you could argue um next so anyway this feature does not any doesn't do anything right now but it hints at future potential uses let's go with the c4 compositor oh nice 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 you know how in um, in geometry nodes the you can see how long a node takes to calculate well this concept has been ported over well re-implemented basically because it's completely different in the compositor by sergey sharevin dr sergey sharevin sorry on in the top let's see here this is how it looks so on the top of each node you will be able to see how long they take um, this is a timing setting that I can toggle from the compositing well, from the compositor overlays timings and of course you first need to execute it and you should see in some of this I wonder in which compositor is it actually available from all the compositors in the world that we have good question it doesn't seem to be in the default one let's see which one because we have like a 50 compositors now we have three on so oh full frame compositor as for the compositor tile it could be tricky to calculate and it probably doesn't make any sense because eventually they will be replaced into one well one fallback compositor and one for the gpu but still super super nice how do I enable the, the full frame compositor? Well, you go to options and in here you will see the option for the compositor if you go to the settings, the preferences, which you can enable with control comma or command comma in on a Mac. Then you enable developer extras and experimental compositors. In here you can toggle the full frame compositor and there you go now we do see that this blur took 40 14 milliseconds let's let's make it slow bokeh is the button that automatically makes everything slow let's see oh it's still calculating I may have broken the whole compositor is the live stream still alive yeah just very flaky this feature it's amazing because it continues working even while you're live streaming can I cancel I never trust these buttons to cancel <laughs> come on it's 38% blur on a removing no there it didn't cancel it is canceling I, I think eventually or I can also just kill this with um, can I do like X kill this guy and then <laughs> doesn't even want to be killed oh no it came back it is responsive though I think and X kill is the most responsive thing ever can we have x kill for for stopping renders <laughs> anyways the render time is going to be shown for the full-time compositor however why do you want to know how much time things take what if things wouldn't take any time well we're getting there almost the gpu and cpu implementation of the in paint node is now unified so they should look similar the bokeh blur cpu and gpu implementation has also been 
unified. Not only unified, but also uh, fixed. There were some bugs in the CPU implementation where the upper limit of the blur window was not considered, but the lower limit was. And other fixes which you can read here. The last one is the variable size bokeh blur has been unified between all compositors. Nice. All right, let's switch to the curves. Well, only one change this week, but is a performance improvement. About 30% performance improvement when copying a curves data block over and over and over again on a very simple test. But hey, there's not simple. There are no simple tests. So, ah, that's it. Yeah, thank you, Hans. Actually, this is five days ago. No, this didn't make it into into 4.1. So 4.1 went beta on the 7th of February in the afternoon-ish. So this actually might have made it. Ah, this fixes a memory leak. So maybe it made it into into it. Brush assets project is no just main. Hmm. Otherwise, you can you can click on that three dots to see if something has been merged into the release branch or not. However, if this was main before the 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 switch, it would have made it in. All right, C for cycles. This I think is my favorite feature of the week, and. I think I'm gonna be using it from, from day one. This is not in 4.1, this is for 4.2. Cycles. Override world option per view layer. So, so nice. So the same way you can override a material per view layer, you can also now override the world. So you can basically, let, let's see this in a new. So, if my face wasn't covering this, maybe I can put it up here. Yeah, super nice. Such a simple thing. Well, it's simple. It's not, not not simple, but simple concept. So many possibilities. And if you look at the the code itself, it it's really not that like. If you look at the code, it's adding the UI, defining the world. If the override is override, I mean. You need to know where to write those lines, of course, but I was surprised by how, um, yeah, how small is the, the old, such a, such an amazing feature. What else can be overridden? Could be overridden. Okay. The world is a special case because you always need some kind of world. There's always one in the scene. Um, yeah. What else? Which other data block could be overridden? Wait, no. Why did I close that? I didn't. I didn't say thanks to Jonas, the shell, for implementing such a very nice feature. And I just saw that you left a comment. Thank you. Smiley back to you. Thanks for implementing this feature. Um, next. Well, there is a bunch of changes regarding. Open image denoise in the in this week. Basically, there is an option to disable open image denoise GPU on, on the GPU per scene. Um, apparently, this can take a lot of memory. So maybe you want some scenes to not have GPU denoising and only the main one. For example, if you're compositing your scene with multiple with multiple scenes. Um, the setting, I guess, is here. Yeah, the noise on GPU. Next. Set quality parameter for open image denoise. So the API of open image denoise exposes two modes, high quality and balance. This currently only has effect on NVIDIA devices, on which it provides a noticeable performance improvement without visible difference in quality. Yes. So this change sets the quality to balance for the viewport and high quality for the final frame rendering as it's what makes most sense. 
so nice. Denoising. So what you see is not what you get, I guess. What you see will be sort of what you get. It, will, it shouldn't be that much difference, but it should be higher quality in the render itself. Although it's always, it's sometimes nice to have what you see is what you get. Okay, these settings are exposed at least, quality. Ah, okay, they are exposed. Because it is, it is nice to, even though it's low, it's nice to know that, okay, what I see is what I'm gonna get without having to press F12. Like, was some kind of blender internal or something. Next. Gray out hardware ray tracing checkboxes when not unavailable. Yep, maybe you were pressing the hardware ray tracing on off and without knowing that, well, check, just hoping for something to change, but maybe your device didn't support it. Now it's gonna be grayed out. Nice. Speaking of open image denoise, it is now available for metal. So Mac OS devices using Apple Silicon and Mac OS 13.0 or higher, which if you are on an Apple Silicon, any Apple Silicon, M1, M2, M3, I think it's highly recommended to just update to the latest. Like most of the time, I don't see a reason why not, because Apple Silicon is supported really well by Apple. <laughs> they better be, because they make it. And um, Blender, even though Blender, actually, today I, I was updating the, the requirements page on Blender.org, and I can just go to download requirements and converting it into this list so it's easier to read. In the macOS section, we can see that um, Apple Silicon is macOS 11.0 and uh, for Intel Max it's 10.15. However, it is recommended to use the latest, which at the moment is macOS 14. Sonoma, I think it's 14.2 already. But yeah. So this change in the in the requirements was uh, was made today. Hopefully, it makes it a bit more readable, and to see what is required, what is not, what is a hard requirement, what's not. Um, then we mentioned about the peripherals and displays, which it's not that you need to have a 1080p display, but it is recommended for optimal use. Um, it's not a hard uh, like requirement it's not like your computer is not gonna work blender is not gonna work but yeah it is important to mention that next more denoising sip on um, when rendering offline so without the viewport like in the background when you send it to a render farm it's going to default to cpu uh, by default for the denoising and last but not least speaking of requirements Blender 4.2 raises the minimum requirement of um, the SSE instructions for your CPU capabilities to 4.2, SSE 4.2. Now, this sounds like, oh my God, does, does my computer support F for 4.2 or not? When I was looking at the requirements page, we were already suggesting people to use, to, to like the minimum was 4.2, even though it was technically 4.1. I think Blender 4.1 runs with SSC 4.1. The numbers aligning doesn't have anything to do. Um, but also 4.2, I think it was introduced by Intel in 2008 and in AMD uh, CPUs in 2011. And I don't know who needs to hear that. When I hear here 2011, it's like, ah, it's not, not not that long ago, but that was 13 years ago. And Blender still recommends a, well, the latest Blender release should work in a computer that is 10, nine, eight years old, max. Um, 10, if possible. So that puts the 4.2 requirement for CPUs like way ahead. Like you, you definitely have it. I, I bet, I bet you, you have it. Anyways, that's it. EVNX, well, there's a few changes in EVNX. Um, filters have been reintroduced. Filters are already possible in EV. Now they are 
on uh, EVNX, filters such as environment surfaces, curves, and volumes, those that you defined in the, the view layer properties. Um, so that was implemented. One thing that was removed is the options for light probes visibility for lights. This is not implemented yet, so it has been removed from the UI only because it didn't, it didn't work. And one change that has no pull requests, no images, no descriptions, nothing, but it was <laughs> made by Clement, creator of the, he made, he made EV, and Bison, who also works on rendering, or is more on cycles side of things. So I trust them. <laughs> the change is the attenuation of the lights. Take light shape into a consideration and do a small fade to avoid abrupt light lighting changes. This fixes quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of light leak, which Eevee is known for, but doesn't fix all of them since light leak can still leak during the fade. We could do this fade on the light on the lit side, but then it breaks from the working cases. So yeah, small change there. All right, let's move into the next section that is about a part of Blender that's not even finished yet. Chris Pencil 3 is highly under development. There is multiple people involved. For example, Folk introduced layer parenting and transforms. This is kind of big. This is not one of like most of the other changes. I think they are just porting whatever was in the in 4.2 in Chris Pencil 2, but this implements layer parenting and layer transforms. So the layers now have a transform panel where you can move the entire layer around and also a new relations panel, which you can specify a bone name um, or like an armature and a bone or another object to, so the layer is parented to another element. Nice. The next change is add initial weight paint mode support. This makes it possible to enter and exit the weight paint mode. No other functionality is added for now. <laughs> what else do you need? Go in and out. Lattice modifier has been ported over from Grease Pencil 2 by Lucas, who also ported the dash modifier from GP2. The move to layer operator in Grease Pencil 3 now opens a pop-up so you can enter the new layer name just like it was in, for, in the old Grease Pencil. The separate operator has also been ported from Grease Pencil 2 by Matias Mendiola, who also pre-ordered the menus to follow the same layout of the Grease Pencil, the old Grease Pencil implementation. So more catching up. The, of Grease Pencil 3 with Grease Pencil 2. Next, Geometry Nodes. The Rotate Rotation node now has a toggle for local and global space, similar to the Rotate Euler node. The Sample node, Nodes, some Sample Nodes have been, the, the name of the sockets has been tweaked just to, to make them a bit easier to to understand, for example, the geometry proximity node was always confusing to me, like target. Target wasn't, I didn't really understand what's, what's target. Is that the source or or the, the target? <laughs> and so now it's just called geometry. So you just input geometry and then the source position is actually sample position, which because target and source is just coming from the same place. Anyways, now is the geometry proximity node has the socket geometry and sample position. Whereas the sample UV surface node, which used to have an input called source UV map, now it just says UV map. So simpler. And this change actually made it into 4.1. So this will be in 4.1. Nice, I think. Let me <laughs> double check. The commit is in 4.1 release, nice. Next, 
the bake node now has the steel mode as default and this probably also made it to 4.1 yes 4.1 so the steel the there there's two modes for the bake node the animation and steel steel is the cheaper version because it doesn't have to calculate every every frame and um, it's most of the time probably most people at the beginning want to start with steel baking instead of just baking the animation and last but not least hans made a small change for the instance uh, reference code under the hood that should potentially lead to reduced memory usage and increasing performance next i for internationalization two changes well not many changes like the the a bunch of translations bits from all languages has been ported over like every week from the with the help of from the community into blender but um besides that inside of the code there is now a bunch of uh, labels and strings which got fixed um, for extraction which means that they were not extracted for translation so even though you had your blender in I don't know Chinese which happy new year by the way uh, well some text would still be in English because it wasn't marked for translation but now it will so nice next similar to that there were many um, bits of text especially in the status bar info and the, the viewport statistics which were not translated they were not marked for translations and now they are there is about 200 lines 270 lines of code that were changed and marked for yeah for extraction and further translation Next, I for ID management. ID management. So the perch operator UI has been updated, has been improved hugely. Um, it used to when in in the well in 4.1 actually because it's only made it in 4.2. In 4.1, the um, perch operator it just tries to tell you everything that is going to be removed and purged in one line so one you have to be very <laughs> you have to read that line very carefully okay so what's everything that's going to be removed link like perch remove and use data and also if you move the mouse away it goes away because it's this kind of um, quick to um, pop-ups not anymore now the UI and UX from Harley has been implemented in this patch. Bastian committed recently. It's one of those big pop-ups and each item can be toggled. So you can toggle on and off which, what do you want to remove? So instead of deciding, do I have an old blender? Do I, I have, I have here. This is B40, this is blender 4.0 file cleanup you have for each one of these items and use data and use linked and use local this huge menu now is just one operator and then you decide what do you want to remove so you can remove all three without actually having to click three times actually six times because you have to go file cleanup click file well actually nine clicks file cleanup yes super nice and also it's much easier to read what you're going to remove so linked data blocks local data blocks or if you want to do a recursive delete or not nice to see this getting this moving forward this was um, brought over by Harley many many months ago I think last year like or even before that and it's nice to see it finally here so thank you Harley thank you Bastian next is oh library override a performance improvement by Jack 
who's been doing tests, I'm very, very curious what Jack has been working on with that has so many bones and overrides. <laughs> very few of which have an override. So in this test, the and a test five with many bones, this leads to five to ten percent speed up when saving files. Nice. Um, back to lights. Lights. So this is both EV and cycles. This changed by Brecht brings back a look that lights had before Blender 4.0. This introduces a new soft, soft fall off option on point and spotlights that uses the old light behavior from Blender version 4.0. Blend file save with those older versions will use the new, this new option. Super nice. It is enabled by default on new lights. Neat. Well, bringing back the old looks. Next. Mesh. There is a new operator to set the sharpness by angle. This simple operator sets the edge sharpness attributes on edges, either ex extending the existing values or replacing them completely. It is meant to make it more convenient to manually control the sharpness now that there can be more reasons to do that after the auto smooth became a modifier. Next, nodes. Improve handling of deprecated nodes. Well, nodes. Um, so in 4.1, well, in, in many versions in the in most of the <laughs> recent versions of Blender, many nodes have been being deprecated over time, especially at the very early times of geometry nodes, there were some nodes that were replaced and made better or made more flexible. So some of them were deprecated. In this case, for 4.1, the rotate older has been deprecated in favor of the rotate rotation node which uses a new rotation socket. The node is not removed for now, so all files don't break, because that will come with compatibility issues. More generally, we will like, likely run into the situation where nodes are deprecated more often in the future, without actually removing them to keep compatibility. For example, keeping the node around until Blender 5. This patch improves how such nodes are handled in the user interface. In three ways. One. It adds a new utilities deprecated entry in the add node menu in Geometry Nodes. So you can find the nodes that have been deprecated. Two, moves the search items which are deprecated to the bottom of the search results. And three, adds a new um, deprecation notice that will result in a deprecation warning when the node is used. So whenever you use a node, even you maybe search for it um, but it has been deprecated, so you shouldn't use it. Maybe you should use another solution. You will get now a notification that hmm? not checking for the D to avoid problems with upper <laughs> deprecated. I thought there was a typo here, um, but yeah, there can be a a deprecation notice. For example, in the case of the rotate Euler. When you add that, it's going to tell you, use the rotate rotation node instead. So it gives you a solution. Nice. Next. Render. Oh, nice. Merge EV, I guess EV next, and Cycles motion blur settings. Merge the duplicate motion blur settings between Cycles and EV and move them to render data or scene render. So. If you make add-ons or scripts that use the API to set motion blur, for example, what used to be scene cycles motion blur is now scene render motion blur position. What used to be scene EV use motion blur now is scene render. So everything that used to be on its own renderer is now under scene.render. Yay for unification. Remember that some time ago the that the field settings were unified between EV and cycles and then just 
make Blender use its own depth of field and then make the renderers use that. Now the same is done for Motion Blur. Super happy to see that. All right, next is Sculpt. There is four changes this week related to sculpting. All of them by Sean Kim, which actually they are features, but they are removing things that shouldn't happen. Let me explain. The four items are mainly around disabling sculpt when you are not supposed to sculpt. So for example, did you know that you could sculpt on invisible objects, objects that were not, you couldn't see. So maybe you didn't see anything, you were sculpting and then you unhide objects and then, oh, why, why did they change? Well, uh, not only that, it also can affect performance because you are, yeah, you're sculpting something they shouldn't. So um, this is what used to happen before. So you would sculpt and then you would hide and then you could continue sculpting. So now you can't anymore. You would only be able to sculpt in what is visible. And this is also in 4.1, nice. The expand operator is also not possible to run on invisible objects, which affects the expand mask in topology by normal expand face set by topology and expand the active face set. Next. Trim operators are no longer possible in invisible objects and the same goes to sample detail size, which again was possible to do on invisible objects. Next. User interface. Oh, nice. Another one by Jonas Dichel, also um, with the help from Aras, who has been working on the video sequence editor side of the scopes and also help to final finalize this vector scope improvement. So let's have a look. It is an update for the scope design. I think I, I, I gave a little sneak peek of this last week, but yeah, this actually, this image is not up to date. Jonas, you are, you were watching the stream live. It is always nice when developers update whenever, because if, if you actually keep going on in the thread, you will see the last version of it somewhere here in the Jonas. So th this is how it looks at the moment for Luma and for red, green, and blue. Beautiful. And, but yeah, but the, the first image, this is how it used to look at the beginning of the, of the patch review. Um, so it's always nice to go back. I know I'm asking more. You made the, the whole thing <laughs> and now it's like, oh, but you didn't update the image. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I could actually go and update it myself, but uh... next. <laughs> no, no, next. No, the, no, not next. Actually, let's go back to the, to the, to the actual um, pull request colored and luma options for the point cloud. The circles are no longer very low poly. <laughs> Overall grid background colors are now tuned and the primary color locations have text labels, which if you zoom in, well, maybe I can, no, no, let's look at it in the pull request here. So when doing, when, when in the luma preview, it now shows the background color here. So you get to see, because you only care about this part, right? Like the white part, where, where does it go? Okay, it goes more towards this red-ish color, right? Then there is this line, which is for the skin tone. And then you have these labels, red, magenta, and blue, cyan, green, and yellow. Why? Super nice. And when using the other mode, the RGB, you can actually see the colored color on top of the dots. So you can see where it goes. Super nice. Next change by Guillermo. This is, uh, I think this also made it into 4.1. Yes, nice. Because 
Remember how I showed you a couple of weeks ago that you can now drag and drop multiple objects, like multiple OBJ files, multiple FBX files into the into Blender, and it will open all, all of them. Basically, it would if you if you grab five OBJ, it would be like running the operator five times. Well, now Blender, well the operator is going to tell you how many if you bring only one file it used to say like import file type import obj not anymore now if you have one file that you're bringing in it's gonna give you in the title the path of what you just dragged if you bring more of more than one files in this case it's gonna tell you import three files, the number of files that you bring in, which is super nice, super handy. So thank you for this, Guillermo Venegas. Guillermo has been working uh, so much in the UI lately and it's, it's amazing. We should, we should bring him into the meetings for the, for the UI module. Next, Damien Picard um, improve more the more of the, well related to what I mentioned before for translations. He works mainly on translations. Well, some things are not just translation, but maybe when looking for translations, you find so many <laughs> issues in the UI itself, like either like left to right or L click instead of L and B, which is the standard for left mouse left mouse button or right mouse button. FFmpeg all caps shouldn't be like that Bezier uh, cannot anyways those things that happen because most of us are not native English speakers <laughs> mm, next move bone collection special menu up ah, that's that's nothing that's just moving a button up that's that's just uh, me trying to get one <laughs> trying to get in the credits of Blender 4.1 <laughs> literally just <laughs> move one button here, here, now, now. This actually, it is, um, it has a good reason. It is standard for all the UI lists or the lists in Blender to have adding and removing buttons on top, special buttons in like a drop down in the middle, and then the move up and down buttons underneath. Just, I'm not, I'm not trying to, <laughs> to steal there. So, but it's, take some credit. <clears throat> Next. Ooh, nice. All right. So this change, it's nowhere in Blender yet. Like internally, it's not used yet, I think. Maybe in one pop-up. Pop but for add-on creators, and we, we, start, we still have to define, we have to write down the user interface uh, guidelines for this. These are separators. We already have separators in Blender. We have horizontal, vertical, even vertical with space spacers. So it, it makes space, which is the kind of separator that we have here in the header that allows this to be centered, which we're introducing 2.8. But now we have a type of separators that are lines that you can actually see like line separators. So you can have like vertical line between items or horizontal lines to separate, for example, between titles or between sections. Super nice. We still haven't implemented this anywhere in uh, Blender, but uh, we plan to. For example, here, we could have a separator between the splash settings. I mean, I still think we should revisit this. I don't like these two buttons floating here. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't look very pretty. Um, but anyways, there are many parts in Blender where settings are part of the same panel, but they are not really related to one another. Um, yeah, you, we, you, they could be better separated. Especially in popovers, I think. Some some sections are not really, like they're, they're not connected, they could be separated. Anyways, a small thing. Speaking of small things, but that make a difference. The icons, well, some icons in the outliner were missing in the data block preview in the blend file mode. 
so they were added by Mika. And the last but not least is a not something that was added, but it's actually removed. The spin duplicate tool has been removed. You're no longer going to see it in here because it is now a setting, basically. So the spin and spin duplicate, it was exactly the same. And one was using the actual making a duplicate of the object of the of the whatever you had selected and one wasn't but it internally was the same tool so to make things simpler it is now a property of the setting it's of the tool itself so whenever you use it you need to toggle on and off or i think even after using this here if you use it i think you can yeah you can adjust it in the last uh, operator settings here so internally it was just the same it was just exposed as two options but then yeah why, why having two options like even the smooth and randomize you could say well no no because if you search for randomize it is it is it's true it's true um but smooth is like the opposite of randomizing right if i smooth something here if you had a no no too much simplification makes it hard to find things. And that's 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 it for the user interface. I think we have to jump into the last section of today, the Blender Video Sequence Editor. So V for the Sequence Editor. Two changes by Aras. One, default to the new auto image filter for strips what does he mean well um over the last few weeks months actually months um Aras has been working on so many things inside of the video sequence editor and image processing in general in blender and in this case the there were many settings for sampling some of them more performance some not and the new feature that i'm going to to show here it is adding a mode that is called auto automatic which basically uses all of the changes that were introduced previously by make take, deciding for you what's what's best and for performance i think it's it's the best um it's the best option because for example if you didn't scale or rotate and you move everything in integer position so like 20 pixels, not 20.1. Well, the sampling type nearest is going to be used. Nice. So it's the fastest to compute. Then, if you scale by more than 12 times, then it's going to use Qubit Mitchell. So it gets nice blending between the pixels than with bilinear. If you scale down by more than 2x, it uses box because it looks better. And then, otherwise, it's going to use bilinear. Super nice. So it should, um, it should be just, it should either look nicer or be faster. So super nice. The existing strips that use bilinear, which is the default uh, in the past, it, they're gonna be switched to automatic when you load these files. And last is that the last change by Aras says simplify and speed up sequencer draw uh, cache drawing. So some time ago, five years ago, part of the cache rendering was converted to not draw one quad at a time. This change now the sequencer now that the sequencer timeline drawing code has sequencer quads patch that patches arbitrary number of things for drawing fairly easily. This test, for example, ex exporting the sprite fright edit where the whole timeline is visible and all the caches are visualized well not exporting i mean just just visualizing it went from 2.40 milliseconds in that it takes to update to 0.16 so and there is less code always a good thing if you want to learn more about all the changes that adas has been working on look at his aras-p.info slash blog for the blog and you can see a blog post where he describes 
how did he get into the video sequencer at all? This is sort of how he got into the sequence editor editing at all. And then everything that you will find in here. And not even that, because there are patches that are waiting and that will um, that need to be reviewed. And there are even more things coming up. So from faster timeline drawing to the scopes that are not only faster, like 15 times faster drawing the waveform for this scope um, to that some that just look better. And yeah, just have a look. It's super nice. Sampling of audio, even like editing the library that you, Blender uses for, for, for audio. So it is by default not an overkill and it's just faster to compute. It's such a nice read. So yeah, thank you Aras for, well, for working in Blender, fixing Blender and just writing about it. It's super nice to read about this. So yeah, nice. Have a look. I'm actually going to share this in the chat. There you go. All right. That is all that is new for this week. I hope we have time for some questions. What time is it? How long have been I been streaming? One hour. All right. Let's do how many questions are there? Five? Ten? There is 14 comments. All right, let's see. So I'm going to go all the way down. 14 comments there, some some replies. So maybe maybe I make I make it through. Let's let's enable all of them. And um, let's start from the bottom. I'm going to go through all of them. It's it's the second to last live stream. Why wouldn't I? Well, there are reasons why I have only one set of vocal cords. I've been standing for one hour here. Anyways, let's start. Slow Kid says, Hola, Pablo. Man, when last week I read about Blender Today and all the other communities, stopped being maintained, I didn't get immediately that this would have meant also that the end of Blender Today videos. I gotta tell you, you will be missed. Your weekly updates have been a joy to watch and listen. Thank you. And they were one of the reasons why I started using Blender, really. Oh, that's, that's nice. Thank you. That being said, I know this choice is for the best and for better management of resources and ultimately the future of Blender. Thanks for these years of Blender updates. Keep rocking. Thank you, slow kid. Um, yeah, so the discontinuing of the communities here is not really related to Blender today at all. Like, as in, they are two different things. Like Blender, like this website up here, this, it's a, an experiment that we did 10 years ago with Francesco, 2014 or 15. We started Blender today as a, as a website for news. We wanted to have some sort of like Blender Nation where you don't have to wait for things to be um, accepted or published. Or also sometimes publishing to Blender Nation feels like, oh my God, it's too much. You know, it's like, it's it's big, right? It's being featured in Blender Nation. So um, I wanted to, to break that and make it like a Twitter or Reddit, but for Blender. Even though Blender already has a Reddit and a Twitter. <laughs> um, but anyways, the project mainly was successful. It was was successful in some part, but it was mainly used more and more often for right-click select features, right? For these for these proposals. So we and and nowadays Blender today, like the website is mainly just YouTube videos. You can see it's just just mainly YouTube posts. So I think there are other ways of of uh, getting this kind of info. Um, this is an independent project. It's no, not related to, to Blender at all, even though... Well, we say that about the Blender chat as well. We started it as an independent project because we wanted to step away from IRC. Well, improve communication, not step away. There's nothing wrong with IRC. It was just that we wanted to have a bit more... Uh, 
a bit, it, it make it a bit easier to to share files and emojis. Emojis were really important. But anyways, um, Blender today ending this live stream's ending is is uh, separate from that. But thank you, nonetheless. Nuno Alex Conceicao says, Hi Pablo, thank you for another Blender Today Live. Thank you for supporting Blender Studio, being a gold development fan supporter, supporting Charge Open Movie, and the 30th anniversary of Blender. Nice. Hi Pablo, um, thank you for another Blender Today Live. Last week I posted here an idea proposal for scene notes that was too long for you to read in the live session. You mentioned that the idea seemed like the existing proposals of collection notes, but this is much more than that. The objective of scene notes is to manage the scene collection and view layers to a higher degree than currently Blender is not able to do. For clarity, I've included a couple images on the proposal with some simple image examples you can scroll down to the bottom and have a look if you like um yes again i um i think in the future all kinds of connections should be um like node based it's like the flexibility is unparalleled right is what other big softwares are doing so I agree, it's just that, yeah, I can't really read the whole thing in here or and in the middle of a live stream, but uh, thank you. I'm, I'm sure like more people will, ha will have a look at this, but I see that there is import Alembic, import add camera. I think some of this is even like planned for geometry nodes, not even like scene nodes, collection nodes. Next, hi. Um, Wire Soul. Is there a reason that some parts of Blender geometry nodes use position and some parts use location? It's confusing when I'm trying to automate some things. Well, location should be should everything, right? Position is when you get the position attribute. Location is not an attribute. It is something you do. You change the location, transform. But yeah, it is it is hard to deal with this. Um, with these namings, but when you read position, it's mainly an attribute that you get, and location is when you when you set the location. Unless you want to, you're, you're talking about other parts of Blender that are not related to geometry nodes. Freemind says, "Hey Pablo, hope you're doing fine. Last week I asked you why the options menu isn't in the active tool properties isn't next to other global transform options." You said that these options depend on the active tool, which is why they are there, but that's false. Just like the other transform options in the middle of the header, they are mode specific and have no relation to the active tool at all. No matter what active tool is selected, the options menu is always displayed about the same. Could you explain what you meant? Actually, now that you mentioned, you might be right. I, I might have messed things up. You know, trying to use the brain and live stream it's <laughs> challenging to say the least um let's see so i'm in edit mode and these are the options yeah you're right this does nothing to do with 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 the active tool yeah this is for all tools this though it's well i don't know it's options like does it does it make sense like snapping does snapping affect only origin? Like, yeah, it does. Location parents. But where would you put it here? Like with a menu called options or a... There must be a reason why we put this here. Oh, 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 I think it's because these settings these are basically a duplicate of these settings up here, which is a bit stupid, but yeah, it's just to giving giving them more function and more visibility. So if we have this here, then we will have to add this here too, right? Which has moved the whole thing. But then there's just too many things in the header, like they would you would need to scroll. Because there are modes that have more options here, right? Like basically the options in for sculpt mode fast navigate this is not a this is not a tool this is not related to this delay viewport use the form only maybe use the form only but not fast navigate that's a display setting this doesn't have anything to do with this 
So I think we need to be careful with what we... It's not just taking the options menu and putting it up there. I think it is related mainly to... That's why... That's what, uh, yeah, this is why I meant with the active tool. It's not active tool, like it's active mode. But sometimes this options menu is abused by other modes. Like bleed. What does bleed have to do with the, with the masking? Well, it is affected when you're painting. I don't know. Make make a, a proposal, but take into account every mode, please. Or maybe you did a proposal already. But yes, you're right. Actually, for object mode and edit mode, it do makes total sense to put it up there. Just just to be to be clear. Hola, Pablo says Finn. First of all, big thank you for the years of Blender updates. You made my Monday a lot better. Thank you, Finn. I would like to know if there are requirements for the new GPU code, for example, physics implementations. Hmm? There are requirements for new GPU code. So does it have to be cross-platform or is it okay to only implement it for CUDA or Informel? <clears throat> no, I, I like physics, really? Like physics is... Like having some like denoising to only be for optics, it was it was okay, right? But there was a fallback for CPU. Um, but having completely different physics depending on the graphics cards that you have, like you mean like like for supporting like Nvidia physics or I don't know. I'm I'm not a huge fan when software is just so different from one pl platform to the other. I have it with with this with the with OBS that it's unfair how different OBS it is on Windows and Linux and Mac they have different support for different features and plugins and it's just very annoying I, I, I wouldn't like to make one software better like software run better than the other in different platforms although it does in some cases um, is code platform required for a Blender release? It is. We can ask Ton that next week. Let me ask him. So, uh, so let's see. This would be GPU. Maybe remember to write it again. Specific code. I wrote it. Next, Guillel, Guillermo says, Greetings, Pablo. With a quick question regarding dependency loops, I've been, interesting, been interested in rigging, but some of the rigging I've been working suffered from this issue. So I was wondering if there is any workaround to get the same result, or would it be possible to have some kind of iterations counter to improve stability at cost of performance? Hmm. Dependency loop and have a limit of iterations well, but the loop is a loop is a loop. It, like the moment you do, you have dependency loops, just things become unstable and unpredictable, right? So having an, a, a counter it sounds like a hack. You mean to limit the counter to one? Um, I, I have a hard time picturing the exact use case, but um, if you have some dependency loops and you consider there are bugs, report them as bugs. Maybe you find someone that is. Um, that has run into the same issue or developer that is working on that area. Next, Watson says, Greetings, Pablo. With the save increment feature added in Blender, is there a way to run diff a diff on the different files? I would like to check in different versions. And uh, no. Blend files are binary files, so having a diff between them, it's not going to give you much really anything in eh, interesting or usable, I think. It is more uh, for like ASCII version, like when when other software have a ver uh, a way of saving things as ASCII or like text, basically. That would make more more sense. But no, there's no option for diff. Oi, Pablo, what tool do you use to generate these change logs? Um, I made a um, I, <laughs> I use a tool that I made myself, and I can share with you. I like. There's really nothing special about this. Let's. It's called Parcero. I call it Parcero because it parses, like the the commits, 
and um, parcero meaning it's a Colombian well consent sorry with C uh, means a friend in Colombian slang so parcero is like yo yeah everybody's my parcero here in this you are my par parcero no no but the code I could paste it in like a, what is a paste paste bin so I can I can paste I can show you the code so the code for parcero is super simple it is let's open in sublime so the code just needs python 3 and git uh, and, and the git module and by this set but i think it comes built in so it's super simple it's just um you need to edit these two things and the date so the this is where i have blender stored in my home b source that's the blender code you need to have a copy of the repository of blender and this is where it's gonna build the notes. So it's gonna make a folder called notes and then just with the name of the of today, dash notes.md, it's a markdown file. Then I specify the next, the previous live and the next live. The previous live is like last week, basically. So in this case, this is, this is what I use today. The next live stream, actually this should be called like current or today's live stream, but Never mind. It's not well. I could do well. The next live it makes sense, and I also like that next and prev is also four digits, so it aligns. So the previous live stream was last week. So the fifth. So 2024 February fifth. So last Monday at two o'clock. That's the closing times. I, I calculate from the from last week to today at two o'clock at 14 hours for americans <laughs> it is 14 hours 2 p.m um there is also some code here that will calculate the seven days the, i used to have i used to do this basically just calculate says uh, seven days bef before and says is six in spanish i don't i'm talking spanglish already sorry seven days prior but I, I i think it's more precise if i just give it the time and that's it you don't need to edit anything else after this line you don't need to edit anything else because the code just looks at your repository in main the main branch and then it's um it just goes through it and if the commit time it's less or is higher than the previous light time and less than the next one so next is between this range then it will add it to a dictionary and then write down that dictionary it skips some some commits like merge commits and then it groups the cleanup and the fixes together then it write down the it writes down the summary and a link to the author and then a, it writes down into a markdown file which looks something like this it is this is the markdown that comes out of it so you can open it with anything with a preview basically this is a markdown this is the list that i have and then you just click on it and uh, that's it um the code is really stupid i am not a i wouldn't call myself an actual developer this is really stupid there is probably a better ways of doing it this to me it's stupid because it goes it looks at all hundreds of thousands of commits in blender but this is internal this is all your local repo so it's not like you're poking the server every time this is just your local repo so it is fairly straightforward actually if i go to live parcero and i run parcero it takes one two should take less than five seconds maybe yeah five seconds to parse everything and it made a um an md file a markdown file with all the things anyways i can i'm, I'm gonna, literally going to select everything here copy go here paste and this is going to be syntax highlighting for python and that's it paste expiration never public create new paste that's it so now i'm going to paste i'm going to link this and then I'm gonna copy it there over. So, oh, remember to edit these two lines. Well, mainly the where you have the source. And that's it.
Do you have GitHub? I do have GitHub. Maybe I could have put it in GitHub. Um, I'm not signing in, and to sign in, I have to get, yeah. Maybe we can put this somewhere and people can make pull requests. Anyways. Next. Well, actually, I'm, no, I'm not going to reply because I'm going to lose where I was here. Roman says, hey, Pablo, how are you? It's not a question, but I just noticed that the recent file history is now showing up when right-clicking on the Blender icon in the Windows task. It's a small thing compared to all the latest awesome features Blender, but it really made my day. So thanks to the team and thanks to you for the great show. Yeah, I think this was added by Harley some time ago. I didn't notice because I don't... I, I, I'm using Linux here and I I don't think that feature is in or maybe it is no it's not um, yeah it's very Windows specific but super nice so thanks Harley I think did you use Kali Linux or Linux I use um, oh yeah maybe that code needs to be made it, I, it works on Mac and Linux I don't know about Windows. Probably not because of the slash forward. Mm, yeah, maybe you need to do some tweaks. If you do some tweaks for Windows and make it work there, please uh, share it. Maybe we can make a. I can make a, a repo, or you can make a repo. Put it somewhere. It's it's GPL. I I I call it GPL without specifying the GPL. Mm. Hi, Frost Crack Studio. How are you? It is any, a, is there any way to get the old add modifier back? Not with an add-on, but as a setting in Blender. Uh, no, there is no way. There is an add-on that does it, but there is no, uh, there is no setting in Blender. And the last question by X Dragon says, "Hi, Paula. I hope you have a great day. I will miss Blender today, as it is a great show. Thank you. I will also miss." The one thing I would really miss is the live Q and A you did. My question is, will you or someone from Blender do a live Q and A? After, after Blender today ends on 250 on the next week. The reason is that the Q&A can only be done from someone that works at or with Blender. So someone else can do it, and I don't mean an hour, but maybe 20, 30 minutes to ask community questions once a week. And again, thank you for a great show. Well, thank you, X Dragon. Um, so, well, those were all the questions. And the last question is related to something about next week. So next week, I plan to interview Don. Um, he's going to... He was here. He actually kind of proposed it. And I was like, you sure? You ready? Yes, because he today was getting some emails. And he usually gets emails all the time from... What's going to happen to Blender? You know, people that are afraid to switch to Blender because they don't know what's, what, what could happen, the future if investing time and energy and money into moving their pipeline to Blender. So it is important to make things clear. What is where is Blender going to be? So he was like, well, instead of me replying to every email like that, why don't we just make it live? We make it part of the Blender today, the last Blender today live stream as we know it and you know make it an interview maybe also uh, get questions from the community so we could we could do that for the last episode um maybe this setup will work maybe i need to pull the camera down a bit because you know <laughs> this makes me look like i'm not small which i am not in my country i'm not there's <laughs> nothing wrong with being small it's just ton next to me is intimidating so it's the ton is gonna be like this high um so we'll find a way maybe he needs to sit down i need to stand up this is the last episode now next one is gonna be the next uh, last episode so yeah i i hope you had uh, fun how was, how's was the chat did i miss anything big if you plan to do blended oil strings would you do a spanish course for us before that <laughs> I plan I plan to do Blender OI live streams. That's the that's the Spanish version of Blender today. I don't have plans to drop 
to stop doing the updates for Blender. Um, or even because Blender, the Spanish speaking people community don't have a alternative, right? Like the English speaking community can go to Dev Talk and then, or actually go to the code blog. And there is a link up here to the last one, the last update. 12 February, this list has pretty much everything that I mentioned today and more. Like there is a few things that I didn't mention. Like the camera alpha is a factor property, which is actually a fix from something that changed before. So that's why I didn't mention it because it used to be fine and then it was wrong and then it was fine again. Um, but yeah, this list is already available for, I think, a year, two years, more even. So there is really no that even more. I think during the pandemic was already available. Um, so, yeah, there are options, whereas the Spanish speaking community doesn't have any. So I plan to cover that, that spot. Do you use app BGE? I don't, but no, I don't use any game engine. When I tried some, I, I was trying the uh, Godot engine when I, I, I bought a course that I never started, but at least I contributed to GD Quest. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but um, no, I, I would like to to get involved in, in that. And I haven't tried app BGE, but I love the, the game engine. It's actually one of the reasons why I started using Blender. Well, I started using Blender because it's the only thing I knew. And when I found out it has a game engine, it's the main thing I wanted to to, to work on because you, it's just insane. You press P and you are playing with what you just modeled. It's just insane. Uh, but yeah. Will V-Ray come to Blender? Ask V-Ray. Blender has really nothing to do in, there's nothing stopping that. If Renderman did it, if Corona did it, there's nothing stopping V-Ray from... And actually, in the past, they used to. Any news on Grace Pencil um, Force Fields? No idea. I may continue these live streams, Pablo. Be my guest. Every Everybody is welcome. There are people already making these, these uh, videos. A ton of thanks, pun intended. Thank you, Mischief. <laughs> All right. This is a goodbye until next week. Actually, just, just just see you, see you, see you soon. It's nothing, nothing more than that. Next week with a guest at about the same time, probably exactly at the same time because it should be earlier. Um, let me know if you have. Uh, you can add me at on Blender today on Twitter or mention on social media or in the Blender chat. What do you think we could do for the last episode of Blender today? And also, wait, I actually didn't answer the last question about having Q and A's in some way or another. I don't have, I don't have any any plans yet, but I do think it is important to 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 stay in touch with the community in this this type of of uh, Q and A's shape. 20, 30 minutes is probably not going to be enough for this kind of, uh, of this interaction. It usually just gets extended. Um, also, not all the time I would be, I would know exactly what to answer because so maybe it's a question deep into some geometry notes thing that I'm not aware of. So I wonder if maybe not doing it live, but well, live is always fun. But, but bring someone else and have questions like the thread for questions open like a day in advance and announce it on uh, YouTube community posts and Twitter. Maybe that could, that maybe that could work, but yeah, maybe that would work. Anyways, thanks everyone. I hope you have a fantastic week. I wish you a happy blending. Watch your ear holes. Well, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that loud because otherwise you would...
it was a bit loud. Thanks everyone, I see you next week, same place, same time for the last Blender Today Live. That was sad. That was too sad. <laughs>